Hello folks, this is going to be our first uh, contact tutorial and in this video we're going to be looking at how we chop up an existing piece of audio into individual slices and then we're going to import those slices into contact 5 using the mapping editor. So you can see in my set that I've already got two things here. I've got a MIDI track that contains the contact plugin and I have an audio track with a drum loop here. I've pulled this drum loop in from the samples library in live, but you can use any drum loop you like. I'll give you a couple of, um, I'll provide you a couple of loops if you want to work with those, or you can work with whatever, whatever you've you've got at hand, or you use something from your personal samples collection. Uh, and yeah, as I said, what we're going to do is chop this up using the split and crop functions inside of live. We're going to uh, bring those samples inside of contact so that we can create our own drum sampler. So let's get started and actually to get started here, there's one option we need to change inside of Live's preferences to make this process a little bit easier. So we're going to hit command and tab and I want you guys to open a uh, command and tab, command and comma to open up our preferences. And then I want you guys to go to the record warp launch options here. And the option we're interested in here is the create fades on clip edges. It's currently on, we're going to turn it off. And that will become apparent as we as we go on. Okay. Okay. Let's close our preferences window and let's just get started on this. Um, for this to uh, for us to be able to complete this efficiently, we're going to be using the zoom and scroll functions quite a lot. So just to recap how we do that in live, hover up to where the beat ruler is, um, and your cursor turns to a magnifying glass. You click up and down to zoom in, and you can uh, use left and right with your mouse click held down to scroll through the audio. So we're going to be doing a lot of that here because we're going to be zooming right in. I'm just going to adjust this because I think I started the loop early. That's better. Um, yeah, we're going to be zooming right in so that we can see individual hits, where they start, the attack transient, and when they eventually kind of uh, die or fade away. So let's get to it. The first thing we're going to do is uh, cut out this first sample, this first uh, a transient, which is a kick. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to find the point at which the uh, this kick drum uh, stops and when the next transient starts. So we make a selection. We just click inside of the track and we get this blue line. And at that point, we can hit Command and E and that will split the clip. Okay, we're going to do the cropping separately. Um, okay, so what we need to do immediately then is to rename this, which is going to make it a lot easier when we start to bring it into the, the sampler. And to do that, we select the nameplate of the clip, and we hit Command and R, and we're going to give it a very specific naming convention here. I'm going to put a number first, 1, and then I'm going to call it Kick. Okay, and then we're going to rinse and repeat this technique. So I'm scrolling along. I'm going to find where the next transient starts and I'm going to hit select a point and hit command and E and then immediately rename this. So select the nameplate, hit command and R and let's give it a number first, two. And I think this is another kick. Let's just check. Yeah, it's a kick. Okay. So again, just rinse and repeat. I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to speed this video up or just uh, cut to, you know, give it a little edit so that we're cutting to the actual contact work. So select a point where the next sound starts, hit Command and E, uh, select the nameplate, hit Command and R, let me have a listen to it. It's a snare drum. Hit Command and R, give it a number first, three, and then call it snare. Now, just to go over before I uh, do a quick edit here, um, just to go over why we turned those fades off in the preferences. Um, with the automation shown, if we hit A, we, sh we, hit, uh, we can see our automation. You see these little squares here. If we hadn't turned that off, um, that option inside of uh, the preferences, we would get a fade at the beginning of every split. And because we're working with drum sounds here, that fade is going to severely deteriorate the tra uh, attack transient of the sound. We never want that with a percussive sound. So um, with that off, we don't get that fade. And when we uh, crop these samples, we'll have that nice sharp attack transient on them. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm not going to bore you here. I'm just going to carry on rinsing, repeating this technique where I'm finding the point, hitting, uh, selecting a point, hitting Command and E, and renaming the files. Okay, so I'll see you in a second when I've uh, chopped out a bunch of these sounds. Okay, and we're back. So I've chopped out 10, or I've split 10 individual hits out of this. Um, and it was it's quite a labor-intensive thing where we have to do all this zooming and cropping. I had to move some around and maybe resize a couple. Um, but once I'm happy and that I've got these individual slices, what we need to do now is to crop them so that they become individual files that then we can import into um, contact. So the way that we're going to do that, we can do multiple clips at once. If we select the first one in the, in the row, then hold shift and select the last one. We can then right click and use the crop clips function. And now those files will live. Inside the project folder, we have our samples folder, processed, crop, and we have all of our individual hits now. We can see the WAV files. We can also see these .asd files. They are just metadata files that Live creates for everything it exports. We don't need them, but you don't need to worry about them for the purposes of this exercise. Okay. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to jump inside of Contact. So I'm going to select my MIDI channel. I'm going to hit the little spanner here. And the first thing we need to do just going to move this up a little. Actually, no, I need to get back to my track every now and again. Uh, yeah, we need to create a new instrument. So I'm going to select this little disc icon, and then I'm going to hit the new instrument uh, option. And we get this, um, this section of the interface shows up, which doesn't give us a lot. To unveil the rest of the interface, interface here, we have to hit this little spanner and a lot more um, functions come into view. We aren't using them all today. Really the purpose of this tutorial is just, just to go back over the mapping editor. Mapping editor. So I'm gonna select mapping editor here, okay? And we get this view where we have, we can see like a piano roll and then we've got this grid above it. And this is where we start to bring our samples in so that we can um, create our own custom sampler. So the way that we start getting samples in, I'm actually going to do it using the uh, the browser that Contact has. So my project lives on my desktop in drum slicing, in the samples, and then processed. And we're getting a separate list down here now, crop. And here's all of my clips. Now, the reason we give it a number first was so that we can then import them into the sampler in the order that we um, in the order that we cut them, except for number 10. That's so annoying, um, but we'll just move that. That'll give me an opportunity to move that stuff around. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how we get stuff in now. Okay, and there's a couple of ways we could do it. We could do it one by one, um, or we can import a bunch. Now, I'm going to demonstrate pulling one in at a time. So if I click and drag this kick sample, and I move it over into the mapping editor. There's something really important. I haven't let go of my mouse click here. I've still got it held down. Because I want you to observe that if I hover further up this grid, it wants to map the sample. This gray area is the amount of keys and semitones that it wants to map the sample to. So when I'm hovering way far up this grid, it wants to map it to almost well it is an octave from c1 all the way up and if even actually if i hover right to the top it wants to map it to all keys which isn't appropriate for this particular exercise so what we need to do is we need to hover our mouse with our mouse click still held down we need to hover our mouse all the way down towards the bottom of the keys until it's only going to map it to a single semitone and then we can let go Okay, so I'm going to delete this because actually we can put these, we can put multiple samples in at once. So I'm going to select the first one in the group over here in my mapping editor. Uh, and I can, I'm actually going to do it this way. I'm going to ho uh, hold command and multi select because I want to avoid this flam because that number 10. Uh, so I've selected everything but the flam here. And then I can just click and drag. And the same principle applies, whereas if I'm hovering with, like further up this grid, it wants to map it to each sound to lots and lots of keys, and I don't want that, so I'm clicking and dragging all the way down until every sample just lands on a single key, a single semitone, and then I can let go. 
Okay, and let's get this flam in right at the end. Click and drag, and then drag all the way down till it's on a single key, and let go. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see things happen. In this bar at the bottom, we've got a plus and a minus that allows us to zoom out and obviously in. And then we can use this scroll bar as well. So now we have our drum sounds mapped to single keys on the keyboard, meaning that if we've got our track record armed and we select the track, we can play those um, sounds individually. Really cool way to take an existing loop and then rearrange it and create your own patterns out of it. Um, I think that's about it. We are going over multiple things, like lots of other things inside of class, like tuning and, and, and modulation and things. Um, but for now, really, I just wanted this to be a recap on the mapping editor stuff. So I think I'm going to sign out at this point. Okay. Hopefully that's been helpful, so uh, give it a shot, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, bye, bye.